Aaron Blaze here. Welcome to another Friday live stream. We are away from the computer and we're sitting at the animation desk today. We're going analog, people. But no, I'm, we're, we're doing a big uh, uh, live animation event tomorrow where I'm going to be teaching online for six hours. I'm going to be teaching um, how to animate on paper. So I thought today would be a nice little primer uh, for you guys to get a little taste of what we're going to be doing tomorrow. And if you haven't signed up for it, maybe this might spark your interest and you can go on over and check it out. So uh, we've got the whole game today. We're, we're broadcasting on all of our normal platforms. We've got Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter. We've also got um, uh, TikTok today. So welcome to all you TikTokers. We've got Vedanta Sproston, my wife, handling the TikTok questions. We've got Dustin and Nick handling the other platforms. Hi. YouTube. Hello. And and, and Facebook and all that. Don't so, forget to say hi to the camera. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta, we, we got to do our, our, our promotion for LaCroix. Let's our free our, our free sponsorship. LaCroix. <laughs> if only. LaCroix. Send us LaCroix. Taste the rainbow. Well, wait a minute. I think that's taken already. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm, um, I am so neck deep right now in Snow Bear. Uh, animating Snow Bear. For those of you that don't know, I am doing an animated short. Nick and I are creating an animated short. Soon it's going to be everybody, all hands on deck, helping us create this animated short about a polar bear in the Arctic, and it's called Snow Bear. And so I thought I'd do some paper animation today, go old school, and show you how we used to do it back in the old days when I was working at Disney. For those of you that don't know, I worked on Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and The Lion King. Pocahontas, Mulan, I directed Brother Bear. And this is how we used to do it back in the old days. We animated on paper. As a matter of fact, if you go back far enough, I remember my boss telling me, hey man, you know, one of these days, Aaron, you guys are gonna be drawing on a computer screen. And I told him he was crazy. So I ate my words. But um, do we have any uh, sales to announce today, Nick? Yeah, we got a couple of things. First of all, as Aaron mentioned earlier, we've got our live animation workshop that's tomorrow. So that's what we got. Yeah. Well, there you, you go. Have, you, might have to, you might have to repeat all that because I don't think the mic was set to the ads. What's that? Oh, the uh, ad source wasn't on? To the ads. Oh, so did you fix it? it? Huh? I can't fix it here because... Oh. I, I'm sorry. Uh, well, TikTok probably heard that. Yeah. <laughs> go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com. We have over... Right here. CreatureArtTeacher.com. 2.6 oh. thousand people on TikTok right now already. Right on. CreatureArtTeacher. So, yeah. It's dot com. We'll hit that all again in a little bit. <laughs> so so what, what are you drawing? So right now, I am drawing Snow Bear. Actually, it looks a little rude, but I'm drawing Snow Bear with his head turned away from us. And I thought it'd be interesting to show you because it, 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 you know, it's all about animating in space. You know, when we draw, yes, we're drawing on a two-dimensional surface, but we have to think three-dimensionally. And so I want to turn his head so he's like he's going to turn really quick and and look at camera. And so what I'm drawing is Snow Bear looking away from us. And uh, we're going to spend some time turning his head around. I'm going to bring it down here. And so you guys will get to see it kind of flip around, flip around, flip, flip, flip around. Do you have for context on that first drawing? <laughs> yes. 
So what you're going to see is this head turn. So snow bear is a polar bear. Obviously, that's what I was saying earlier. And so, well, no, snow, snow bears are <coughs> not, but the, our snow bear is a snow bear. But our polar bear named yeah, Glenn. Yeah, I just realized that first drawing does look like something else. If you yeah, yeah, I know. I just, I, I realized it too as I was like, drawing. I back so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, that is the back of a polar bear's head with his ears sticking out. Don't think anything else. This is a rating sheet, people. <laughs> That's so funny. No, we didn't hide stuff in the in the movies for the, for those of you that are asking. So I'm going to close his eyes on the head turn. So closing his eyes. Have you given uh, names yet to all the characters in uh, the in Snow Bear? Yes. Yeah, so well, there's only one character really. Well, there's other. There's other characters, but they're not, they're only on very quickly, so yeah, we don't the, really don't give warrant. Give it away. <laughs> um, but the, um, but like our main bear, this guy, we, uh, um, my mentor, when I was trained in animation, that the guy that trained me, that taught me, his name is Glenn Keane. And he designed, you know, Ariel from The Little Mermaid and The Beast and Tarzan and Silver, John Silver from Treasure Planet. And all kinds of great characters. And so um, we thought we'd name him Glenn. Glenn the Polar Bear. Why do you keep flipping the paper? Because I want to see the movement. It's a little bit broad right now, but in my mind, I can see it. So he's turning his head, coming around, and you'll see he's getting a little bit bigger, too. So you're just doing key poses right now? I'm right now, I'm just doing the key poses, exactly. So we'll try this one more time because I fixed the audio issue. Um, this weekend, for those who missed it, is your last chance to get our four-legged animation bundle for just $5. Uh, Dustin, if you want to hit that slide. Yes, which one? The animation bundle, four-legged animation bundle. is just $5 this okay. weekend. That gets you a, uh, there's walk, trot, run, and there's a bunch of bonus lessons in there, like how to do an elephant walk, how to do an alligator walk, four-legged animation in general. It's, uh, it's basically $40 off, and that ends on Monday. <clears throat> so I like to take a little bit of time on here when I'm doing these keys. Just make sure I've got, because these, the reason we call these keys are these are the drawings that are really going to kind of determine the rest of the drawings. And this is the rough animation. So as you can see, I'm drawing kind of rough. And normally, like in a feature studio situation back in the old days, this would be the rough drawing, and then this would be handed off to uh, assistants and in-betweeners who would then redraw this, and, then, and they would do the nice clean drawings that you actually see up on the screen. So, you know, I was an animator for 35, 33 years, but you never actually saw any of my drawings up on the screen. You saw the cleanup artist drawings that were redrawn over my drawings. Do you have any advice when um, animating a dynamic perspective shot? Yeah, man, that's tough. You know, you got to, when you're talking about dynamic perspective, you got to think about three-point perspective. You know, you've got your horizon line, which has your two points in each direction, but then you've got uh, either you're looking up and you've got a point going away, or you're looking down and you've got a point going down. So they're, they're, you've got three-point perspective there. And you got to keep that in mind as you're rotating around. It's really hard to do. It's that's a that's a tough one. Uh, we got a face our YouTube question. Aaron, I see you are a bottom peg animator. Is that a left-handed thing, or is that something you picked up at Disney? No, that's a Disney thing. All, all Disney animators are, are bottom peg. The um, the top peg stuff that's usually or even side peg. A lot of that's Jap uh, Asian uh, animation and, t and some TV. But yeah, we uh, at Disney, ever since the old days, it's always been a uh, bottom peg. Uh, Benjamin asks, for films like 101 Dalmatians, were those original drawings or are those also cleaned up? 
Um, those were what's called rub downs. So a lot of them, and depending on the animator, if there was a, 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 a supervising animator that was really drawing well on model, then what they would do is called a rub down. They would literally just kind of take an eraser and just kind of rub it down a little bit and then reinforce some of the lines. So you'll still get a little bit of sketchiness in there. Um, if they were, a, you know, from a junior animator that might not be drawing the character quite on model, then maybe a total redraw. Um, but by and large, a lot of those were rub downs. And then a uh, uh, Twitch question. Uh, are 2D animated series and movies still animated frame by frame or are they animated differently? Most of them are still animated frame by frame. There is a thing called tweening. Um, but that, I mean, for I, I don't know that they do that for... Nick, you might know more than me. I don't know. A lot of television animation is puppet rig animation now, which is basically tweening. Uh, yeah, I don't do that. Um, actually, uh, Snow Bear... But there's still a lot of frame by frame as well. Features tend to be frame by frame. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. There, I want a little smile on his face. Uh, do you ever an uh, animate the keys and struggle with in between to fit uh, with the time the way you want? No, no, but that that, that comes from experience though, because I I've I've been doing it for thirty five years, and so I know the timing that I'm looking for. And um, did you struggle early on? Oh yeah, timing has always been a you know that's that's a hard thing. That's one of the 12 principles of animation is timing. And so it's, it's a tough thing to, to master. Like how long did it, uh, do you think it took you to, uh, to figure it was it a out? few years to oh. get timing to where, um, you know, there's a thing called one of the biggest problems with working out timing is a lot of animators end up with very even timing, meaning everything just kind of moves evenly. And that's a kiss of death because it becomes very boring. And so what you want is what we call texture. You want texture in your timing. And I always explain it like music. If you think about music that's very even sounding, bah, 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 it gets very, very boring because it's always the same. But when you can get texture in your timing, da, 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 you know, that kind of thing in your animation, as well as music, <clears throat> it becomes more exciting and, and interesting. Um. Uh, do, 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 do. Mark asks, does it take more than 24 frames per second if a character's motion is slow? No, it's actually the opposite. But, I mean, we, we're, we're always, I always animate at 24 frames per second. Yeah, there's no never matter. more than 24 frames per it's, second. But well, you, 24 frames per second is the constant. That's the constant. So it doesn't I mean. matter if the character is moving slow or moving fast. I only have 24 frames a second to figure it to, to, to describe the action. So if a character is moving slow... I'm just doing drawings that are much closer together, so they move across the, you know, the frame slower. Or if a character is moving fast, and I have to spread those drawings out, you know, as far as the distance they travel. Are you friends with the uh, animators who worked on Atlantis: The Lost Empire? Yes, I am. So there, you can see him coming up. I'm going to. Push his ears out a little bit. Polar bears have very small ears. They're kind of set way back on their head. But I'm going to pull his out just a little bit so he's... Hello. Hello. Give him a little cute look there. On TikTok, um, Seer is wondering how your animation is going for the polar bear underwater, that whole sequence. That's, that, shot, that shot is really coming together great. It's, it's one of the biggest shots in the entire film. It's just about done, actually. Yeah, it's 18 seconds long. And, uh... Well, there's three whales in it, right? Yeah, there's three whales and the polar bear, and... So it's... There's a lot of work that went into it, but it's really coming together. I'm really happy with it. And, uh... It's really kind of... It's, it's got the feeling that I was going for. I want... You know, when the music is playing with it, it's got this very kind of poetic, kind of ethereal feel to it what are those uh, pegs down below the pegs are there to hold the paper in place so that it never moves so it always stays registered the, all the drawing the drawings always stay in the right place so here now you can see him turning his head kind of it's only three drawings 
But now you can understand, hopefully, as I flip, hopefully you guys on TikTok can see this. As I flip, you can see that head coming around. Now I'm gonna add drawings so that you can understand the movement even more. But these, these are the major, you know, star keys. And I always put circles for those big keys. How do you stay confident in your animation? Um, well, time, you know, and, and experience. The more you do something, the better you get at it, and, and that's where the confidence comes in. You gotta keep in mind, I've been doing this for 35 years. And so if you do anything for 35 years, it's like, how do you, how do you stay confident getting up out of a chair and walking across the room? It's, it's, it literally becomes that kind of in, intuitiveness to, 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 the, to the drawing. Now there's always, there's always a, a level of experimentation and wonder on if something's gonna work, but there's never any doubt as to whether or not I'll find it. Sometimes it takes a little bit to find it. But I've been doing this long enough that I have methods in order to find it. A Twitch question. What is your favorite way to ink, pen or brush? Brush. Yep, this person loves using a brush too. Yeah, I love the, 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 the spontaneity of a brush, but also the, the, uh, the, the inconsistency of the line. And pen what, too, too what is the table that you're drawing on called? Well, this is my animation desk that I had at Disney. I've had this desk for 30 years. Matter of fact, you can't see it, but down in the right-hand corner, right down here in the right-hand corner of my desk, I've got a little carving of a lion head that I did. I carved that the day that I started on Lion King. It's got, it's got a date on it, and it says December 1992. That's when I carved it. So it that's took you a whole, it so took you 30 a whole, years ago. It took you a whole month to carve it? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a few people on TikTok saying, "Wow, this looks like Brother Bear." Do you take inspiration from other people's movies? <laughs> I actually directed Brother Bear, so there's a reason why it looks like Brother Bear. <laughs> yeah, I directed Brother Bear. That was a fun movie to make. Erica Bay is wondering. Uh, hey, what, Erica Bay. <laughs> and she's wondering what time the uh, workshop is tomorrow. Start, start eleven a.m. Eastern. Eleven. Eleven. Oh yeah. I'm just scrolling out. I mean, yeah, actually, out. you can you can pick it up and move it if you want. Well, I don't want to mess it up too much, but now I'm gonna go. Go there. Yeah, it's right here. Yeah. If you're getting Rafiki. close, you can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's at the bottom corner. Is Rafiki in Lion King a mandrel or olive baboon? I think he's a mandrel. Uh, do you animate using a 2B pencil? I've heard a lot of animators use that. This is actually a 10B pencil. This is a very soft pencil. It's called but, a Mitsubishi 10B. But this isn't what you would normally animate a film with. You're mostly doing this for camera, right? Yeah, I mean, I well, back in the day, I would use, you know, when I was using pencil, I would, whatever pencil I could find, I would use. But, um, but nowadays, I, I just discovered this, this pencil. Um, my mentor, Glenn Keane, has been talking about them, and so I decided to try them. And, um, and there we are. I was wondering how, uh, Julie asks, who's gonna be participating in our live event tomorrow. I was wondering how much paper we will need tomorrow. Is 100 pages enough? 100 pages should be enough, yeah, as long as we don't get too wasteful with it, yeah. I'm gonna take you through how to flip the paper, you know, like what I'm doing now, like this. I'm gonna take you through how to create in-betweens, which is what I'm going to do next. And then we're going to do a bouncing ball. We're going to do a flower sack test, which is where we literally just take a flower sack. The, the reason we do flower sacks is that it, it, it's very squishy and squashy, and, but you can also pose a flower sack to get attitude out of it. And if you um, run out of paper, one thing you can do is get a school textbook and just draw on the lower corners of the pages. Yeah, it's true. That's what I used to always do. Or a, uh, or a, a post-it, a, a big post-it pad. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start drawing the, uh, the in-between here. So he's starting to turn his head, so I got to do the in-between drawings, the drawing that goes between the, the start drawing and this drawing right here. And uh, Leave asks, do you always draw characters to fit the framing of the final shot, or can you draw a bit more for tweaking the framing? 
Um, I always try to, I try to stick to the framing as much as possible. That's always kind of the, the goal that you want to do. Um, but I mean, that, not to say that I've never changed the framing in the past. I have, I've definitely changed it. But you try to avoid that as much as you can. Uh, at this stage of the animation, have you ever uh, scrapped an animation sequence and redo it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's that. I remember in Aladdin, when we were making Aladdin, we were cranking away on the animation, and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg, who was uh, second in command at the time, um, kind of decided, you know what? We got to uh, we got to redo, rethink this story. It wasn't working out, and so so they uh, they kind of and we had a lot of animation done. There was a whole song about uh, um, Aladdin had a mother. And there's a whole song in there where he sings to his mother and all kinds of stuff where he's trying to make her proud. And uh, it was pretty emotional, but it just wasn't right for the story because it was taking away from the romantic story, which was the main main story. So it was um, they shut everything down for like five weeks and we just kind of went on downtime and they rewrote the whole story. YouTube question. Since you're animating on paper, how do you know where to animate characters if there's a complicated background? For example, walls in the foregr and foreground elements might affect your drawings. Well, we have a layout. I have a, the background is done first. So I already know where everything's going to be in the background. So I animate to the background. I don't normally just animate on a, you know, completely blank oh yeah we always start with a blank sheet of paper yes but i know where everything's going to be do polar bears have really thick like heads and necks I mean, why, why do they why are there muscles or something that's important yes it's thick necks there then polar bears have tend to have a long neck as well matter of fact uh can one of you grab that the polar bear, bear skull dustin maybe because you're close The one on the right. Yep, that one. So this is a, a you know, when, we, when I start a big project, I, I do a lot of research. And this is, we bought this actually for um, our How to Draw Bears course. This is a cast of a polar bear skull. So you can see how absolutely massive they are. I'm actually showing the, the face cam. Oh, good. Okay, so... Um, and I've got TikTok over here. Can they see it on TikTok? Um, kind of. Let me zoom out a little bit so they can see the actual, how yeah. long the back of the... Yeah, so they have a very long head and very shallow forehead. They don't have much of a forehead at all, unlike a grizzly bear, which has a forehead. And so, you know, I got to draw that snout kind of connecting right in almost to the top of his head. And so that's, a, that's very much a polar bear trait. So even though I'm drawing a cartoon, here you go, Dustin. Well, I'll put this over here for now. Even though I'm drawing a cartoon, um, I want it based in some sort of reality, so it's believable. I want it to be believable. That's a Bone Clones, correct? Yes, this is that 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 is from Bone Clones, which it's a cast. If you could direct Zootopia, what would your story be? <laughs> I don't know. Zootopia is pretty perfect. My good friend Byron Howard directed Zootopia, and I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything he did. Yeah, so I'm animating snow, uh, uh, my polar bear from an animated short that I'm, I'm creating called, called Snow Bear. And this is the polar bear from that short. And so I'm just doing a little demonstration on how I might animate a character turning its head. So and that's what I'm doing here. And this paper you're currently using... Um is this a special type of paper that you're using? A certain yes. weight or something? Yes, it has a certain weight to it. It's 22 pound, and um, it's uh, a, a specific size. This is 16 field paper, so it, uh, that's basically the size, you know, in an animation term, the what the camera sees, and um, it's got a certain uh, opacity to it, or translucency, I should say, to see through it. But I, I, do mo I don't turn my light table on. That was another question I get a lot. Um, I like to be able to just flip back and forth so that you, I can see the animation that way. Um, so here, 
Now you can start to see that head turn coming around. And if I put the other drawing on top. Did you go to college? I did go to college. I never got my degree. I actually started at Disney before I got my, my, uh, before I got my degree. I finished my third year at Ringling College of Art and Design in 1989. And then I started at Disney in April of 1989. And that's, that's, that was, that's how it happened. I actually went to school to be an illustrator, not to be an animator, but I needed a job. So Disney was looking for interns. And so I put together a portfolio and I got into the internship and that's how I ended up becoming an animator. So when you're an animator, are some drawings clear and some abstract? Like some more not as clear? Why is that? I, want, I, want, I try to make all the drawings as clear as possible. But some drawings will get, just because of motion, some drawings will get stretched and distorted. But they should all make sense. <clears throat> I don't make them abstract. No, I try to make them make sense for what I'm creating. Midnight Harbor on Twitch asks, what kind of paper are you using again? Is it thicker for flipping? Yes, it's slightly thicker. It's not super thick, but it's not really thin either. And it's got to take a lot of like crinkling and you'll see the paper gets distorted on the edges and gets crinkled. Um, so it's got to handle all that. But it's a little bit heavier. And I want to remind you guys again, for those of you that have just joined, I'm going to be doing a live all-day event tomorrow um, where I'm going to be demonstrating all the basics of animating on paper, uh, which is, I, I'm finding it's becoming kind of this lost art and people are really fascinated by it, which I like that. And so I, want, I thought it might be kind of fun to show you, you know, the way we used to do it. Actually, Art of uh, Mandy Lee uh, says, I'm very excited. Hey, Mandy Lee. I'm very excited about the course tomorrow. I've been uh, looking forward to it for weeks. Yes. Uh, I, we saw, be, I saw your post. Should we be using a 3B or 5B pencil? What do you recommend? I recommend the 5B. Something nice, dark, soft. Something that makes a nice, sure line. So I see how I'm flipping. I'm going to teach you how to do this. This is called the in-between flip. So what you're doing is you're looking at the first drawing, the second drawing, then the third drawing. And so as I flip, you can see that snout coming around. Hi, the angel says, I'm so glad to see paper animation is still around. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hopefully my head's not getting away there. Let me know if my head gets in the way. Oh yeah, we might even do a shot or two on paper, just for nostalgia's sake on, uh, for Snow Bear. Thorne says, Brother Bear was always my favorite. Not a lot of good native representatives in movies. Yeah, we actually did a lot of research for that. We spent a lot of time up in Alaska, uh, Alaska University. We went to an Athabascan village and really spent a lot of time talking to natives. Now we purposely set the movie itself back during the Ice Age so that we would have a little bit of cultural freedom to create our own kind of myths and legends and stuff. But we really wanted to make sure that we were doing the right thing by everybody. And so we spent a lot of time. I took two trips up to Alaska, um, uh, you know, doing research for that. And uh, uh, the movie actually opens um, Denahi is speaking Inuit. You know, he's actually speaking Inuit, and then we go into English. How do you animate uh, multiple objects moving at different speeds? You just got to think about how that timing is going to work for those objects. You know, that's, that's where the experience comes in. It's, um, you know, it, it, and sometimes what you'll do is you... you it's hard to do it all at once sometimes. So you'll take one object first and then you'll, you know, animate that. And then you take another one and animate that. And... Hey, Gabby came in to say hi. Gabby? Holy mackerel. We haven't seen Gabby in a while. The Gabster. 
Are you thinking of creating your own line of animation supplies? No. Uh, will you be covering timing charts in your animation workshop tomorrow? Like yes. how to create them and figure them out? Yes, I am going to cover timing charts. There, there is a question about how you decide how many in-betweens you need between each two pose. That really comes down to timing. You, you decide, you know, how fast or slow do you want something to settle into a pose. And that will determine the number of drawings that you do. So here you can start to see, <clears throat> if, I, if I flip. We got a uh, first time viewer on Twitch who says, uh, did you know somebody at Disney when you applied? Disney sounds so massive and hard to get your foot in. By the way, I just stumbled over you a few days ago and found out that you're behind my absolute favorite Disney character, Nala. My cat is named after her, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I loved animating Nala. That was a lot of fun. Actually, Nala, the look of Nala was based on my, on my daughter at the time. My daughter's 33, but she was two at the time. Do you want me to bring them a cat? Yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, bring them a kettle. But as far right. as getting your job at Disney. Oh, as far as getting my job at Disney, no. Th it was a different time back then. Matter of fact, Disney, right before, you know, back in the, oh, uh, probably around 85, 86, Disney was thinking about shutting down the whole animation division. But it was Roy Disney that came along and said, hey, let's, you know, this is the heart and soul of the company. Let's rethink this. And so they, um, here's the maquette for Nala. You designed it. Yeah. So cool. There's Nala from The Lion King. This is a, you know, a drawing aid. My friend Tracy Lee and Ruben Procopio, they sculpted this and gave it to me. But uh, and Tracy was the, uh, the, uh, the cleanup lead on Nala. Did the tail break? I don't remember there being a break. Yeah, the there. tail got broken in, in transit. Oh, was that recent? I don't remember. No. no, it's always been like that. Never noticed it. Uh, let's see. How do you animate two characters interacting with each other? For example, character A grabbing character B and punching him. How does character A's animator know where to grab and what to and where to strike? You, you, um, it's all done by the dominant character. So the dominant character starts first, and you'll just rough in where the other character might be, and then the other animator comes in and animates to where you're grabbing. So it's always going by the dominant character. And uh, matter of fact, I animated a a scene in, in um, Beauty and the Beast where Belle and I always talk about this sequence, but where Belle and Beast are um, interacting, they're arguing back and forth, and so she's holding onto his arm and she's trying to bandage him, and he's yelling at her, "That hurt!" and all that stuff. And um, so that was, you know, Mark Henn animated Belle, and I animated Beast, and we just went back and forth. You know, because it, we, we had to share who was dominant in each shot. So now you can start to see that head turning around now as I flip. Hopefully you can see it on TikTok because the camera's way over here. That first drawing still looks really suspect. Um, <laughs> do you think one day this handmade paperwork... Does paper this move, need to move over a little bit? No, it's fine. I can just... Fit. Well, okay. I yeah. Can there you go. What'd you say next? Uh, Sorry. Do you, do you think one day this handmade paper animation will be obsolete and replaced by software animators? No. Well, I mean, it already is, right? Well, I don't. If, if I understand the question, I thought you know are they saying that they're saying paper animation? Do you think it'll be obsolete? Oh, yeah, paper animation is obsolete already. Yeah, like we you, you usually animate on a computer screen. Yeah, I still do hand drawn. Now the question should be: Do you think hand drawn animation will be obsolete? which I don't think it'll ever be obsolete because it's it's a, just a completely different medium. What's, but, what's the Twitch handle real quick? Some people on TikTok want to watch it on Twitch. What's that? What's the Twitch handle for him? The, the, Aaron Blaze Art. Aaron Blaze Art. You want to watch it on Twitch. So here you can see that head turn right there. So now we're going to add drawings. And we're going to make it even more smooth. And someone says, is that Mrs. Blaze I hear? Yes, it is. For a whole two weeks now. Mr. and Mrs. Yeah, we just got married. Made it legal. I was your queen on top. So if you're enjoying this, I want to let people know that tomorrow we've got a live animation workshop. It's going to be a full day workshop with Aaron where he's going to be teaching you how to animate on paper. 
If you go over to creatureartteacher.com slash live, we still have a few spots left for that, but not many. And if for some reason you can't watch it live, you'll be able to watch a replay anytime you want, but only if you pre-register. We don't sell it after yeah, the Yeah, we're uh, not selling it after the fact because we yep. get that question a lot. But if you pay for it and you can't watch it, then you'll get be able to download it, right? Yeah, yes. exactly. Yep. Get a replay and watch it whenever you want. But only if you sign up for the class. Were you indecisive in your early years? Did you know what you wanted to do with your life? No, I, well, I always knew I wanted to be an artist. Now, as far as what kind of artist, um, I went back and forth. I, you know, being an animator wasn't, wasn't always in the cards for me. I, I, I originally wanted to be an illustrator for National Geographic. That's what, I wanted to be, you know, an a animal painter and an illustrator for National Geographic. When I was really young, I was really inspired by, you know, uh, animal artists like Robert Bateman, John James Audubon from way, way back. Um, Guy Koliak, uh, who's a contemporary. Um, these are all people that just really inspired me and made me want to, you know, draw and paint animals for a living. And then when I got into college, I found out that that National Geographic, um, they freelance a lot of their illustrations, and so I didn't want to freelance anymore. So I started thinking about, um, you know, becoming, you know, looking for just a different alternative. And that's when Disney, I found out about Disney looking for interns, and I thought it could be kind of interesting. I actually thought I'd be a background painter for Disney. That's what, that was my first instinct. For the people that just joined, this is a polar bear turning his head. Yes. For all your immature people that are... <laughs> oh, are we getting lots of comments on that again? Yes. Come on, and people, grow up. Grow up. It, it, it's a bear. He's turning his head, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Part of uh, Mandy Lee asks, uh, when you finish Snow Bear, uh, where will people be able to view it? Um, we're not sure yet. We're going to definitely make it available, but uh, we're not sure where we're going to make it, uh, where it's going to happen yet. We definitely are trying to get into a few uh, film festivals, um, but we have to, in order to stay in the, to stay um, eligible for the awards circuit, we, there, we have to release it in a certain way. And we just don't have all that lined up yet. This is, hey. Snow, this is from his new short, Snow Bear. And yes, he directed Brother Bear. Oh, it's still saying that it looks well, like Brother Bear? No, no, no. There's just people who are just, have just come in. Like TikTok. Oh, yeah. People are constantly coming in. Oh, I love that. That's what great. Are you drawing? Is this Brother Bear? This is, yeah, this is from Snow Bear, but I did direct Brother Bear, so it looks, it's going to look a little similar. But if you, if you looked at Kenai and you look at this, this polar bear, they're, they're actually quite a bit different. Oh, you made my childhood, so, sir. I love Brother Bear. Love, you got a, a lot of love for Brother Bear. Oh, uh, thank you. On TikTok. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zelji asks, uh, hey, Aaron. Hey, man. Uh, can you tell us uh, about how the the tactile difference between animating on paper, graphite, versus uh, digital, and how it affects your experience? Well, I mean, it's yeah, it's hard to it's hard to explain it without just you know experiencing it. But it's it really comes down to you know I'm holding a piece of paper. I feel that paper. I feel the 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 pencil in my hand and and. All of that, and it's, which is different than, and I mean, the graphite, you know, grinding against the tooth of the paper. These are all things that, you know, it's, that are part of the animation experience, animating in, in this way. Um, now, when you go to working digitally, I, I actually like working digitally over paper in a production sense or uh, talk, when we're talking about production animation, because it's much more efficient, time efficient. Uh, Don Higgins uh, asks, uh, would you go back to school if the, op if the opportunity came? Like, is there anything you feel a quote unquote classroom environment is best to learn in? You know, nowadays, I think with, the, with everything being available online, um, I think you can definitely get all the education you want online. I'm not a huge advocate for college as much anymore just because of the, 
the the cost the cost prohibitiveness of it. I think colleges have really gotten greedy and are pricing a lot of students that deserve a good education. They're pricing everything at, to a degree to where a lot of students can't even can't go to college because of the cost, and that to me is horrible. But um, for those that can do it, uh, there's some great aspects of college, obviously. It's the, the camaraderie. It's the like-minded people that you're going to school with. Um, but if you're able to be a, a, a self-starter, basically, and, and work that way, then um, you know, working online, getting your training online is, uh, you know, when you're, you, you can get all the same amount of training online for a fraction, and I mean a tiny fraction of the cost of what college might be. You know, there's art schools out there right now that are costing, you know, over $50,000 a year. And that, to me, is crazy. There, you can see that head turn. See that? Looks like he's saying no. I really wish 2D would come back. Any um, advice for animation students? Yeah, if you want 2D to come back, then start animating in 2D. It's only going to come back if you make it come back. That's why I'm making Snow Bear. That's why Nick and I are doing it. We want we want to show that you know this is not a dead a dead art. We're still here. Yeah. Plus, I don't know how to do 3D. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, do you ever leave elements to animate afterwards, considering the follow through, uh, like the bear's ears, for example? No, I'll always kind of indicate them. Now, the ears, I, I the ears are fairly easy because they really directly are affected by the head movement, so um, I know how that's going to work. Um, there's things like tails, a long flowing hair, um, things like that that sometimes. I'll, I'll always indicate it and try, you know, but a lot of times I'll go back and make adjustments, uh, um, you know, later. What kind of pencil is that? This is a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi High Uni 10B. So it's a very soft lead pencil. So you always uh, talk about uh, working alongside working under uh, Glenn Keane or like being the beast, but uh, who assigned you to a uh, to animate the beast under Glenn Keane? Like, What's that? Who, like, who what? Who, who assigned you to be under uh, Glenn Keane for Beauty and the Beast? Glenn. Glenn. Glenn had a lot of influence at the studio back in those days. And so Glenn basically went to the directors and said, hey, I'd like Aaron to be the guy. The directors okayed it, along with the producer. And um, and that's how that's how it came out, came to be. So now you can see that head turning. How do you know which frames to draw? That's the question. I'm not it's sure. it's not some it's not so much what frame. It's just it's the pose. And so I see the movement in my head, and I break it down in my mind. Once again, keeping in mind, I've been doing this for a long time, and so I can just see I can see where it's supposed to go next. Yes, you can. Um, it, depending on how much you use that video reference, you know, sometimes that's rotoscoping. That's when you trace right over the video frames. Um, but other times you just literally use it as reference, you know, to, to get an idea of how something moves. And we did that a lot at Disney. Um, I never traced over, except for in Pocahontas. We, they, they shot almost the entire movie on Pocahontas uh, and on video. Uh, for the, They wanted the, the artist to kind of stick to that. But, um, but beyond that, you know, Beauty and the Beast, I shot some reference. Uh, but I didn't trace over it. I just looked at it and went, oh, okay. On Aladdin, I shot some uh, uh, video reference. of um, I didn't shoot it. They shot it for me. But it was um, Jasmine getting, because I animated Jasmine and Raja. Um, I wasn't the supervisor of Jasmine, but I was the supervisor of Raja. But I, uh, I had a shot of Jasmine... Uh, getting up from her her table and she twirled around and I you know I so I, I used reference for that um, so yeah we use reference a lot it was kind of long winded answer and for so for some uh, for a couple of newcomers uh, what uh, what kind of paper is that again and uh, what uh, brand is that from the the paper I get from animation supply or cartoon supplies it's 
cartoonsupplies.com. Dot com. It's in Burbank, California is where it's based, um, where a lot of the studios still are. And um, 16 field animation paper, right? Yep, 22 pound, 16 field animation paper. Um, uh, Disney punched, or Acme, right? Or is it Acme? Do you have any um, recommendations for cheap or free alternatives to TV paint? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's Procreate um, is great. Um, TV paint is really great because of, you know, it's more of a professional uh, software, obviously. Um, but there's Procreate, there's Krita. Um, is there Toon Boom or no? Toon, Toon Boom's not free. It's, oh, it's okay. actually very expensive It's as very well. expensive. It's, oh, all right. And it's, it's subscri uh, subscription based. Uh, Krita has animation, as you just said. That's that's a good free one out there. Um, yeah. I believe Clip Studio Paint also. It's not free, but it also has animation. It's a also has some animation on it. And then, um, oh come on, the one that Duff Travis was teaching um, on our website. Oh, Calipeg. Calipeg, thank you. Yeah, Calipeg's great. Ham, drawing Ham a blank. Ham Burgle says thank you for answering that question. Sure. Uh, Twitch question, does Aaron have any advice for keeping the object that's being animated proportionate while it moves? Yeah, you know, you got to think of sim in simple shapes. You'll see that I start with a circle every time. And so, because that, you know, based on that circle is how I, that's how I attach all the, all the, uh, the features. And so, matter of fact, I'm drawing the nose too long on this one. And, uh, so... By keeping those simple shapes consistent, it'll keep the rest of it consistent as well. When are you planning on releasing Snow Bear? We're hoping to have it done by by May or June of next year. It's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> it's coming out tomorrow. Um, so that's you know that that's the goal right now. Someone suggested Flip a Clip, which is I think a, an app. Ah. Yeah. You You've used that before, aren't you? I've used it too. It's, simple. it's very simple. But. Actually, let me see. I'm trying to see where I'm animating into. Let me see. I'm gonna... The other thing to watch out for are your arcs. You want to make sure that you animate in arcs. So as this character comes around, I want to make sure that the arcs all stay consistent. Uh, Diana Vitali on Facebook asks, uh, do you miss the paper animation or rather... Uh, what do you miss about uh, paper animation? Because I think you also like digital innovations and in that you look to the future with optimism. I always look to the future with optimism, first of all. Yeah, I think there's always better ways of doing things. Not necessarily better, but new. I get, I get excited by new ways of doing things. But, um, I mean, obviously, the, one of the best things about TV, or uh, uh, not TV, paper animation, is the fact you can hold it. Right, you can hold that stack of paper in your hand. It's a, it's literally a, a tangible, you know, piece of art that sits in your hand, and there's something really cool about that. Um, but I also love the fact that I can, you know, when I'm when I'm animating on paper, it, it you know, and I want to shoot a scene. Once I have it all animated, I gotta sit down. It's gonna take me, you know, depending on how long the shot is an hour, you know, hour and a half to shoot, you know, like a, this, uh, the whale animation that I'm doing right now with Snow Bear, to shoot that on paper, uh, that would take me about each, to shoot all the characters, that'd be about a two, two and a half hour shoot. And then, then you go, well, that animation doesn't work, and that animation doesn't work, and that animation doesn't work, so you gotta go back and you gotta make your adjustments, and you gotta shoot it again. And so it's really inefficient in that way. Did you make money for drawing? Or you call it feet of drawing, right? Yeah, well, it, yeah, we, we did everything. We measured all of our animation by footage, but I was paid by the hour. I wasn't paid by the drawing or the, by the feet. I was, you know, I was a salaried, well, actually, I was an hourly employee, and then when I became a, a director, I was a salaried employee. And was it pretty much like they, they wanted you to animate something and you did it? There was no, like... Yeah, I mean, we... They needed you to do this movie and then you moved to that movie. Right, yeah, exactly. But we, we um, you know, we were able, from a creative standpoint, we were able to, uh, you know, talk to the directors if we had new ideas and, 
And as a director, when I became a director, I would really encourage that. I wanted people to come to me if I had new ideas. When you directed Brother Bear? Yes. When you, when you. Sorry. Oh. Um, they just wanted um, a little synopsis of Snow Bear, what it's, what it's about, if you can tell anything. Snow Bear is about a, a polar bear living in the Arctic that's very, very lonely. The Arctic is a lonely place, right? And everything's all kind of spread out and finding a friend is very hard. And so he's looking for these different friends and nobody, he can't find anybody. And the different animals that he does find, they're kind of scared of him. And so he finally kind of gives up on it and realizes, hey, if I can't find any friends to be with, I can literally make a friend. So he makes a snow bear. And it's the story of him and his snow bear friend and kind of the adventures they have. Um, do you still animate as a director or do you mostly supervise the completion of the animation? Mostly supervise. Now, I'm, I, when I would, depending, you know, a lot of directors had different disciplines. I, I happen to have a background in animation, but other directors had backgrounds in story. So some of them would storyboard. I would, I would still storyboard as a director too. Um, but uh, um, so because I, was a, I had a background in animation, if, if I, you know, if it was getting tight, like quotas were getting tight and, you know, I had all my meetings done, I would grab a shot and I would, I would animate it. So I animated a handful of shots in Brother Bear. But mainly as a director, you're responsible for every aspect of the film. So there's really no time to do that kind of stuff. I'm, you know, I'm responsible for the music. I'm responsible for the acting, responsible for the look, you know, everything. Uh, Gabriel or Gabrielle, not sure, uh, says, Aaron, big thanks for coming over to Brazil in 2017. It was the most wholesome experience. Oh, I'm glad. What do you think about the 2D innovations used on Klaus? Do you think more studios will come to use that process? I hope so, because I thought Klaus was one of the most beautiful films since Sleeping Beauty. I really loved Klaus a lot. I think Sergio Pablos is an absolute genius, and I think the studio... Uh, is full of geniuses. Um, I thought, you know, the artistry on that film was so great and it was so wonderful to see it come to fruition. What animals did you see in um, the Tarangir National Park years ago when you went to Tanzania? A lot of elephants. All the stuff we would see in the Maasai Mara, just the elephants there were um, actually really aggressive because they had really been poached. And uh, um, so it was hard to get, you know, the, the elephants in the Maasai Mara are pretty docile. And, uh, but we got charged by, by a big matriarch, big female, that was protecting her, her herd, her family. TikToker says, my dogs are named Kenai and Coda. That movie is so special. <laughs> oh, I love it. You can't tell you how many people I've met that have their dogs named Kenai and Coda. That's really cool. I love it. Okay. Right yeah, leave it going. It's fine. Just I can, know that yeah, the question. I can I can monitor. Awesome. Sorry. Yeah. So for those of you on TikTok, uh, Vedanta has to go get our daughters from school. So um, obviously I'm drawing, so I can't I can't look at the questions, but you can still watch. Do you know if there are jobs for 2D animators on the 3D industry? I think they make a rough animation before starting a 3D animation. They do, yeah. Matter of fact, I've done that. I did that for Blue Sky. Um, I did that for, on Ferdinand the Bull. Ferd, Ferdinand, the movie Ferdinand. I went in and uh, I did rough animation of Ferdinand before they, they modeled him so that they could see how we might move around and act. So now you can start to see, see that head turn? You can see the animation happening. And if we get him there, I love that. You know, I love getting these little expressions, a little goofy expression. And now you can see him coming right around. Oh, oh, hello, hello. See the arc of the nose, the arc of the ears. There it is. We'll get another drawing in here. Start 
bringing the neck around. So what I do is I flip back and forth so I see the action happening. I want to find all that fluidity, all that movement here. I try to stay loose, but not messy. I don't want to be too messy. There it is. Hopefully you guys can see it. Hopefully you can. The TikTokers. I know everyone else. This this camera here, I like the, the view on this camera. Do you think there will be another 2D uh, era, rena 2D Renaissance era in cinema? Uh, you know, I don't know that there will be. There could be. No, never say never, because you know it kind of dried up in the in the 80s, a little bit, um, but then it picked back up again, obviously in the 90s. But there was no CG animation back then either. So who knows? Um, I do think there's going to be a bit of a just animation in general. I think is going to stay strong just because of all the streaming platforms and content creators and all that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as a, another 2D renaissance, I don't know. Never uh, say never. Uh, is copying something a good way to learn? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one of the things we did in college is copy old masters. Then because it, it kind of forces you to kind of make, see the decisions that, you know, other artists made and you'll, you'll discover you know why so I want to get a little bit of drag to that jaw see how the there's a little slight bend to the face right there and he's gonna start to open his eyes at this point too Someone says, you look like Sully from, uh, or you sound like Sully from Monsters, Inc. <laughs> I sound like John Goodman? I'll take it. I'm built like John Goodman, or at least old John Goodman. They have a question for people on TikTok. What does it mean when you're typing slash cam1 and slash cam2 and all that? Are you asking? Or? I wonder if that... So I'm asking people on TikTok. Oh. Oh, it's a joke on TikTok. I don't know what the joke is, though. What's the joke? Oh, they think there are different cameras. Oh, I guess I, is that a, I wonder if it's a set. We might be able to do that where if we live stream it, you can switch cameras. That'd be cool. Yeah, we have, we have the ability to do that on OBS, which we're, we're broadcasting. Yeah, but it looks like they, on TikTok, if we had separate cameras set up, I don't know if this is real or not, but they might actually be able to switch views on the fly. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I know that you can do that on webcams. Uh, Twitch question, when you're using real video as reference, is it traced or only used as reference? It's, for me, it's only used as reference. I don't really trace it. But, I mean, there's all there's any number of ways that you can use it. You know, if you want a rotoscope, then you trace it. If you want to have more of a hand-drawn key animation kind of feel, then you just kind of use it as reference. So here's where we get the dopey look on his eyes. Because he's opening his eyes up, but you gotta have the eyelids just kind of partially opened at this point. So you end up with this kind of dopey, tired kind of look to his eyes. Do you have a favorite animal to draw or animate? 
I love drawing and animating bears, obviously. I love big cats, you know, elephants, any kind of big animal, big, strong animals. I love kind of getting that power. There we go. There, see that? See how the snout's coming up? How do you estimate the length of Snow Bear? Do you guess the number of frames of a storyboard? Yeah, basically it comes down to, you know, does it feel right? Well, actually, yeah, does it feel right? But that's, in animation, you edit the film before you make it. So yes. we take all the storyboards and we put them into a timeline and we adjust the timing until it feels correct and exactly. for the mood that you're going for, or the music cue that you're going for. So you, you edit everything in advance and then you animate to that timing. For instance, our goal, our original goal on Snow Bear was to keep it around eight minutes. But as we boarded it and got the story out, it, you know, it, it, it dictated to us, no, it needed to be 10 minutes. And so that's what it turned into. And we fought, and I, I think there's ways, uh, places where we can tighten it up as we get into animation. But these are things, you know, you just kind of, it's definitely feel. You got to feel it out. There we go. There we go. Look at a little smear there. Get a little color under the under the brow. It's one of the things I do love about paper animation is just the magic of it. You know, I can sit here and create in, in about an hour or two a character that comes to life. You know, that's, that's pretty darn cool. You know, I've been doing this for 33, 35 years. TikTok comment, that's one smug bear. <laughs> that's right. The... Yeah, in the, uh, that, half, that half droopy look. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's being smug. But when you see it in context, you can see, oh, he's opening his eyes. Uh, where will Snow Bear be published when it's done? Well, I was uh, you weren't here, Nick, I don't think. I don't know if you heard me or not. But we, we, um, we're definitely going to do some film festivals and, and do that kind of circuit. There's a certain way you release it in order for it to be eligible for the award circuit, which we want it to be. Uh, but then beyond that, we'll, you know, ho hopefully, I'm not sure where we're going to how it's going to get out there, but you know, we might make a deal with somebody. We might release it. Ourselves. Well, we're going to take it on tour for sure. We're definitely going to take it on tour. We're going to take it around the United States and, and show it. Sorry, I'm yelling louder than normal because I'm trying to get picked up on the TikTok mic if we need to, but there we go. So now you can see that that movement. Hopefully you can see that good. Why did you why did you draw that last frame out of sequence? Because I it's I don't draw with the paper in here. I have to draw on top. So I, I do what's called the it's the in-between flip. And so I'll do another one. So I, I've got to draw on top. That's the only way I can draw the whole character. But I've got to flip it in a way that I can see it move in sequence. So I'm doing a drawing that goes between this drawing and this drawing, right? There's the, there's the difference if I flip back and forth, and we need a drawing in between. So what I do is I'll flip back and forth really quick, and I go, okay, I gotta draw there, here, and I slowly work it into place. And I've been doing this for a long time, so I, it just becomes second nature after a while, the flipping. TikTok question, why does the one frame have a circle on it in the upper right? Because that's a key. That's a key drawing. You'll see that there's, there's actually, the first drawing has a circle. The fourth drawing, is it, has a circle? Yeah. The fourth drawing has a circle. 
One, two, three, four, five. The fifth drawing has a circle, like so, because that's a key. So if I flip just back and forth, these are the these are the drawings that really determine these drawings right here. And then the last drawing has the circle. Once again, it's the same thing. These two drawings determine these drawings. Uh, unrelated to animation, but Twitch question, what should I pay attention to when, trying, when choosing high quality watercolor paper? I'm picking some up on Monday and I want to get the right stuff. You want to get the right weight? You know, nice, uh, you know, get nice heavy paper, nice tooth, um, nice rag quality. You know, uh, Arches is probably the best. Strathmore is good. Uh, are there advantages of making time charts even if you're animating everything? Uh, not really. I don't, I don't put timing charts down for myself. I don't do any timing charts because I, I know in my head where everything's going to go. Timing charts are used basically to lay down the, the timing roadmap for other people following you up. So that's the only time I would put timing charts down is if somebody else is following me up. Twitch like, question. Uh, what do you think of Jap Japanese animated films from directors like Miyazaki? I love Miyazaki. Matter of fact, I had the pleasure of and the honor of going to Studio Ghibli back in 2003, uh, three, three, 2004. And um, I met with Miyazaki, and we had a wonderful time. It was great. I love Miyazaki's film. I love Japanese animation. I love it all. So now when I flip back and forth like this in that pattern, you can see the movement of, the, of that nose. See that? Are sketchy lines okay in animation? Yeah, I'm doing sketchy lines now. See, these are, these are somewhat sketchy. Yeah, you can do sketchy lines. That's its own, you know, it, that's the beauty of animation. You can, it's like drawing. You can do a sketchy drawing. You can do a tight drawing. You can do whatever you want. You know, it's all, it all depends on what you want to do. All depends on what you want to do. If that's the style you want, then go for it. Does the amount of paper used for animation change drastically between movies? Um, not necessarily. I wouldn't imagine at, it would at because... At Disney, it all basically stayed the same. Because the runtime is the same. Yeah, the our same. movies always... We always made a, a goal to hit 84 minutes. That was the goal. They always came out a little different here and there. But the goal was to hit 84 minutes because that's usually pretty much what we were budgeted for. I know we've got a lot of people that are tuning in for the first time on TikTok. And for them, you might not know who Aaron is. Aaron uh, was with uh, Disney for 21 years, worked on The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Mulan, directed Brother Bear, as well as worked yeah. on a bunch of other animated films uh, as support and yeah. all kinds of roles. Character designer, animator. And so now we just like to, if you go to creatureartteacher.com, that's my website, and I teach animation there. Uh, plus a lot of different types of art. We've got a lot of other artists there. Um, if that's something you're interested in, then check it out. It's, it's really, it's, we're really proud of it. You know, Nick and I have been working on this for 10 years now, almost 10 years. And uh, it's something we're really proud of. Got over 500 hours of content there. There, so now you can see those eyes opening up. I'm going to push those eyebrows up a little bit. Does Eric Gilbert still work at Disney? Eric Goldberg still Eric works Goldberg, at Disney. Eric Goldberg, sorry. Yeah, Eric Goldberg still works at Disney. Yeah, matter of fact, you can see him on... Uh, is it Flipbooks or Sketchbooks? Sketchbooks. Sketchbooks. On Disney Plus. Yeah. As well as Mark Henn. Yep, Mark Henn, who is also another mentor of mine. 
uh, at Disney. Uh, he still works there. I left in 2010. How did Mark end up in the Florida studio? He, um, he was just looking for a new adventure. They wanted senior artists for Florida to help train the new guys coming in, like me. And um, they gave him a good raise. <laughs> Basically, is what it came down to. And he would be a senior guy. I think he was looking to be a senior guy at the time. And uh, so, um, so that's, that's, how, that's how it all kind of worked out. So now as I flip back and forth, you can see, you can see that movement, how it slides into place. See that? What I'm doing is I'm showing the first one, the second one, or first one, the second one, then the third one. And if I keep, if I go faster and faster, you can see that movement. Now someone says the stream quality dropped. Uh, it's still the same over here on everything that we're seeing, so you might want to refresh your stream. Will be the last drawing for this sequence. How many drawings are in this sequence so far? Probably nine. I always hit nine. Nine. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, 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 five, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A shot like this for if, if it's if it's just a shot of him turning his head real quick, you know that shot would last maybe a second and a half. That would be uh, uh, like 38 frames, 36 frames. So probably be 18 drawings, 18 to 20 drawings, depending on if you throw some ones in there. If I was doing this at Disney, this is probably all the drawings I would do, and then I would hand it off. Snow bear. Once you finish sketches, how do you start lining and coloring? Well, they gotta get scanned, or, or um, in in the digital sense, they they're already scanned in there. I've I've drawn them digitally, and so then I um, there's two ways of doing this. I'm keeping all my animation rough. I mean, I'm, I'm animating it clean, but I'm keeping it, you know, my drawings. Uh, the next stage usually would be the cleanup phase where they take the rough drawings and they redraw them to be, you know, very pristine kind of single lines. And then those are then taken in and painted and they create a layer under those drawings and start painting in color. And there's different effects that you can do with blends and all kinds of things to get shadows or you know, fades in the color or whatever it might be. But it's basically the color layer goes under the drawing layer. There. So now we got that drawing done. It goes underneath. It's a TikTok question. Why did you leave Disney? Well, it's a long story. I get that question a lot. It's kind of a long personal story. Uh, but I'll tell you guys. Uh, I was actually, after we finished Brother Bear... I was, um, I was uh, contract. I, I signed a new contract and was developing a new movie, but we had to do it in California. I was working in Florida at the time, so Dustin and Austin, my kids, and my wife Karen, we packed up and moved to California and started a new life in Los Angeles. And I started developing a new movie. And while I was doing that, about a year after we got there, my wife Karen was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, and um, and we worked. You know, really hard getting her, her cured. Meanwhile, I was trying to make a movie at the same time. And um, but she wasn't getting cured, and it was getting, uh, it was just getting more dire. And and um, but eventually, on 2000, this was 2005 when she was diagnosed, and then 2007 on March 11th, um, you know, Dustin and I and our daughter and our family, everyone was there, and Karen passed away. And um, 
I was devastated. Uh, the kids were devastated. We were all devastated. It was a hard, um, impossible. It's hard to even talk about now. You just get emotional talking about it. But um, the idea of going back to work uh, was just, you know, after you lose your wife or your husband or your soulmate or your significant other, um, uh, it's hard to think about anything else, right? You know, you just kind of want to die. And I went through that phase. And so uh, I struggled with it. I struggled with a lot of things after that. And um, I was trying to make that movie and I just didn't care about it anymore. And I was, uh, you know, spending a lot of time in bars and all kinds of stuff. And so eventually I was taken off the movie and that's when I realized, you know what, I ought to make a change. And uh, I decided I needed to quit Disney and find find myself again and so that's why I left I was there for 21 years and everything was going great we had a lot we had big hopes and and but you know life life throws you curves and you don't expect it and uh I wanted to you know I wanted to find my kids again I wanted to find me again and so we we packed everything up sold the house came back to Florida and started over I started with a new studio and um, that collapsed after two years. The studio went bankrupt. And so then I just decided, you know what, I wanted to start something completely new. And that's when Nick and I got together and we started Creature Art Teacher. And that's what we've been doing ever since. And I really, there's some irony. I, I, I talk about this a lot, um, just talking about life lessons and especially you know, to a lot of young people because even the worst things that can happen to you in your life, the most traumatic, emotional, hurtful, awful things can lead to things that you would never expect that work out good. And had, and that's the irony, and it's hard to take sometimes because had my wife Karen not passed away, I would have never probably quit Disney and I never would have started this business. And, and, um, if, and what's interesting is that creatively now, doing what I'm doing, I'm happier from a creative standpoint than I've ever been, even when I was at Disney. I'm, I, you know, I'm. Nick and I are. De we're determining our own fate. We're finding our own projects. We're, we're doing our own creation. At Disney, I had to follow what the studio wanted, and so. Um, but it's that horrible tragedy that happened in my life that sent me down this path, and so, you know, there were times that I thought about, you know, kind of ending it, and, but. You know, the next day would come up, the next day would come up. And so, uh, you know, the best thing I can tell you is if you're in that state of mind, I know how dark it is and I know how bleak it is and I know how the hopelessness that, that you can feel. But you got to, uh, well, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> but you, um, you got to stick it out. You got to really stick it out. So there you go. A uh, Twitch comment, it was announced that Mark Henn and Eric Goldberg are going to be at D23 next month. Oh, that's great. Awesome. I wonder if that means they've got something they're cooking up. I hope so. Because I'd, I'd love to see Disney do another 2D film. You know, Disney can really determine whether or not that comes back, you know. Hey, Dustin, so, you awake over there? Yes, I am. <laughs> so there we go. So there's the, sh there's the shot. There's the head turn. Starting with the the phallic drawing, so that's what the back of a polar bear's head looks like. So there you go, and then his head's turning, turning. So you're seeing it in slow motion, turning, coming around, coming up. Eyes are starting to open. Whoops, coming off the pegs into that final pose right there. Snow bear. How are we doing on time? Because I'm on a good stopping point. It's 2.21. We can stop early All today. Right. We, we've good. got a meeting coming up in a few minutes. So. Yeah, we do. We've got a meeting coming up. We're actually going to be talking about doing Foley work on Snow Bear mm. with some folks from from a studio. So we're very excited about that. And then we got to get ready for tomorrow. We're going to be doing a lot more of this tomorrow. I'm going to be doing this for six hours tomorrow. So if you guys are interested in seeing more of this and learning how to do it yourself, Go on over to CreatureArtTeacher.com slash live, and you can get more information over there. Um, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really, and I, I know, obviously, I love 
drawing on paper and going back to the old ways. And I love sharing that, and I don't want it to die. So I want you young people to follow along and maybe give it a shot because it's, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, check that out. And if, you, uh, if you're interested in Snow Bear and want to see how we're making that, uh, go on over and become a, a member over at Creature Art Teacher. And uh, if you're a member, first of all, you get access to 500 hours of, over 500 hours of art and animation uh, uh, education. But also as a side benefit, every Tuesday and Thursday, I am streaming live as I make snow bears. So you're gonna just basically, it's like sitting at a desk next to me, watching me. You can ask questions, uh, you can see what I'm animating. Um, we're not gonna give away all the secrets of the story, because I still want the story to, uh, to have some impact out there. But as far as the secrets on how to make an animated film, I'll share everything with you. I want you guys to know how to do it. So go on over to creatureartteacher.com and you can find out more information about that. And also we've got you know, some good sales going on with some of our products. Yeah, this is the last weekend to get our four-legged animation bundle for just $5. That includes how to animate a trot, walk, and run, as well as a bunch of other animals, bonus animals included in the bundle. So head on over to creatureartteacher.com and you can check those out. Blast call. <laughs> <laughs> So there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I had a blast. Um, we're going to do more of this. I always love coming back and drawing on paper and animating on paper. Uh, we'll do some more of this. We're going to uh, we'll do some uh, more traditional art, not just animation, but drawing and painting as well. Do some live streams. We haven't done that in a while. So, but anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. For those of you that are members on uh, Creature Art Teacher, I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Uh, we'll be back at it 10 a.m. sharp uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, otherwise, go on out and have a beautiful, beautiful, safe weekend and uh, go put some beauty back into the world because that's what we do. I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye. See you, everybody. Yeah, Cowboy Bebop. <laughs>